Welcome to the joy of genealogy. If you've never watched another one of my videos, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome. So glad that you've decided to watch this video and come along this journey with me through the biblical genealogies. This channel is dedicated to scripture. Pure, plain, simple. I want to cover as much scripture as I possibly can on my channel while focusing on those passages that tend to get skipped. I highly recommend, as always, that you start my videos from the beginning. But if you're just watching this video for the first time, glad you're here. Hope you learned something. We have been in a series that I just recently picked back up. And today I want to continue that series talking about Benjamin Part B. Benjamin Part B is on the genealogy of Benjamin, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. This particular video covers a ton of scripture. So that's exciting for me, but I think you should know that going into it. We're covering probably about five chapters. One of them, we're going through the entire chapter and it's gonna be awesome. That being said, as always, if you want a copy of the Excel document that I'm using, you can send me an email, joyofgenealogy at yahoo.com, and I will send you a copy of the Excel document I'm using, and you can tweak it, you can make it any color you want, you can make it any space you want. Today's video may be kind of confusing just based on the way that I framed it, but Again, feel free, ask for a copy, tweak it, make it your own. I would love to have this resource in as many hands as I possibly can. So as I said before, today we are moving on to Benjamin, Part B, The Genealogy. So starting in Genesis, chapter 46, verse 21, and the sons of Benjamin were Bela, Iker, Ashbel, Ira, Naaman, Ehi, and Rosh, Muppim, and Huppim, and Ard. I've said this in another video before, but just so you're aware, the pronunciations that I use are based on an audio Bible that I use. So these are just the way that the audio Bible pronounces these names. I'm more than willing to admit that I might be pronouncing them wrong, but just know that I use a Bible app and this is how they pronounce the names and that's what I'm basing my pronunciations on. These are the sons of Rachel. Rachel had two sons and these sons had children, which are born to Jacob. All the souls were 14. Keep that number in mind. At the beginning of the story, we're starting with 14 people. And spoiler alert, that is going to grow exponentially. Moving on from here, we go to Numbers, chapter 26, starting at verse 38. And let me make a note, this is Genesis 21 through 22. Numbers 26, verse 38. The sons of Benjamin after their families. So we're going to get Benjamin's children, some version of it, along with the people groups associated with Benjamin and his tribe. Do not be surprised if there's a little bit of disconnect in this video. I did the absolute best I could with the text that I'm using. So feel free to leave comments if you have more information. But as we go, I'll try to make it as clear as I possibly can who doing what in these chapters and who's related to who, that's the entire purpose of the channel itself. So Numbers 26, verse 38, the sons of Benjamin after their families of Bela, the family of the Belaites, of Ashbel, the Ash, the lights, of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiramites, of Shufam, the family of the Shufamites, of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. Now, if you've never watched another one of my videos, particularly important for this video, the asterisk and I'll get into this a little bit more, is going to indicate siblings. So jumping into 
verse 40, the asterisk will tell you that these are the sons of Bela. So the sons of Bela, verse 40, were Ard and Naaman. Of Ard, the family of the Ardites, and of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. So one book later, we went from 14 souls to 45,600 souls. Now, it's not as important necessarily that you know the numbers, but when we talk about the tribes, I'm going to try and focus on specific incidents where the tribes are decreased dramatically. And Benjamin's a particularly interesting one in the book of Judges, but I'll get to that at a later video. One thing I wanted to point out before I move into the bigger section is just that the Shufamites, one reference, the Hufamites, one reference. So just as a general biblical reference, just know that they're only here in one part. And so when you look at Hila over here, Ashbel over here, Naaman's mentioned a couple different times. There are some people in the Bible who are literally only mentioned once. I'm going to kind of put their genealogies off to the side for that reason, because they kind of don't fall into line with the rest of the genealogies. So believe it or not, this was the easy part. We are going to dive deep moving forward. So moving down to the next section, which is Chronicles. Chronicles is a book that is intimidating, and I understand it is literally made up of names. But the good thing is, it's going to be used to kind of solidify the names we already have from the book of Genesis. So we're going to cover three chapters, not fully, one of them fully, but two of them as reference in the book of Chronicles. So starting in 1 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 6. And also, I forgot to make mention, this is Numbers 26, 38 through 41. Moving forward, 1 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 6, all the way down through verse 12. The sons of Benjamin, starting at verse 6, the sons of Benjamin, Bela again, Eker, and Jediel. So up here, we have obviously more than three children listed. So that tells me that these are more than likely not Benjamin's children, children, but maybe grandchildren, more than likely grandchildren. But we will get into that a little bit later as well. Jumping to verse 7. The sons of Bela, indicated again by an asterisk, Esbon, Azai, Aziel, Jeremoth, and Irai, five. Heads of the house of their fathers, mighty men of valor, and were reckoned by their genealogies twenty and two thousand and thirty and four. So for Bila, we have twenty two thousand thirty four. From 14. Moving on to Beaker, we will indicate with a different symbol. Verse 8. And the sons of Beaker, Zemira, Joash, Eliezer, Elioenai, And Omri, um, 
Jeremoth and Abiah Anathoth and Alameth. All these were the sons of Begar. And the number of them, after their genealogy, by their generations, heads of the house of their fathers, mighty men of valor, was 20,200. 20,200. Verse 10. The sons of Jediel. Bilhan. And in order to continue a genealogical line, I do this. So you know that Bilhan is the son of Jediel, and then the sons of Bilhan, Jeish, and Benjamin, and Ehud, who is an important character in the Bible. One of the judges in the book of Judges, a really important judge, a very interesting judge, one that I hope to cover, absolutely one of my favorite stories in the Bible that I hope to actually unpack in Benjamin Part C. In verse 10, and Ehud and Naana, Zethan, Tharshish, not to be confused with Tarshish from the book of Jonah, and Ahai Shahar. All these, the sons of Jediel, by the heads of their fathers, mighty men of valor, were 17,200 soldiers fit to go out for war and battle. That's 17,200. Jumping down to verse 12. Shephim also, and Huppim, the children of Ur, and Hushim, the son of Ayr. Just to do a little biblical check here, we have Ayr, only shows up one time. And I believe Hushim only shows up one time. Nope, a couple times. Maybe a different Hushim as well. Nope, same one that we are going to talk about in First Chronicles chapter 8. So this covers Benjamin in First Chronicles chapter 7. We have, surprise, the entire chapter of First Chronicles 8 is dedicated to Benjamin. So of course we're going to cover that in this video, starting at First Chronicles chapter 8, and I'm not even going to give you a through line because it is verse 1 all the way to the entire end of the chapter. So buckle up. Here we go. Now Benjamin begat Bela, his firstborn, Ashbel the second, Hera the third, Noah the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. Just for comparison's sake, this is what First Chronicles says are the children of Benjamin in comparison to the children of Benjamin mentioned in Genesis. So again, I say that I think these are grandchildren. I think these are different relatives. I know that Genesis says the souls of 14 people. But when you talk about sons, it gets a little bit confusing because they consider sons your biological sons your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your in-laws. It gets all kinds of confusing. I'm not an expert, as I've said before. I'm just somebody who looks at the text. So all I want for this video, as we move into chapter 8, is for you to be able to see what the scripture says. I'm going to walk you through the text and show you where some of the discrepancies are, where some of the questions are, and just kind of show you what the Bible actually says. And then again, keep in mind that when we say sons of, it doesn't necessarily mean directly your son. So continuing with First Chronicles chapter 8, it says five sons right here. As per the last time, we're going to do Bela again with an asterisk. Verse 3. And the sons of Bela... Adar, 
Ira, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman again, Ahoa, Ira, Rufan, that one's a fun one, and Hurim. These are the listed children of Bila. For comparison's sake, these are the listed children of Bila in the previous chapter. Jumping to verse 6. And these are the sons of Ehud. So we're going to mark Ehud this way. These are the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Geba, and they removed them from Manahath. I'm going to make note of that. Heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Geba. And they removed them to Manahath. Now I'm making note of that because I believe it comes up later in the Bible. Still doing research on that part. My understanding of this text is he removed Ehud. Naaman from verse 7, Ahia, and Gira, but that they aren't actually his kids. So verse 7 is a little bit confusing, and the wording of this is going to get confusing in a little bit also. But reading verse 7, I think Naaman, Ahia, and Gira were removed by Ehud. And the Ehud actually begat, per verse 7, Uzzah and Ahihud. Verse 8, and Shehaream begat children in the country of Moab after he had sent them away. In the country of Moab, after he had sent them away, and Shehaream had two wives, per verse 8, Berea and Hushim in purple because they're female. That makes it a little bit easier to follow up with. And he begat, so starting in verse 9, the third wife mentioned, he begat of Hodesh, his wife, Jobab, and Zibia, and Misha, and Malcolm, Verse 10. For some reason, the audio Bible pronounces this Zeb, but that's not how it's spelled. And Shekiah. And Murma. These were his sons, heads of the fathers. And Husham. Verse 11, and this is where it gets really interesting. Hushim begat two sons. Baitab and El Pale. The sons of El Pale, verse 12. Eber. Misham, Shamed, who built Uno and Lod with the towns thereof. Verse 13, and Beriah also, and Shema, who were the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Aijalon. Heads of the fathers of Ijalon who drove out the inhabitants of Gath. Again, important later. Okay, so this is where the chapter takes a little bit of a turn. You would think at first glance that the next couple verses, verses 14 through 16, were continued children of El Pale. That's really not how the chapter reads. What we're going to do from here, 
just to make it really clear, when there's a symbol before a person's name, everybody with that same symbol is siblings. When there's not a symbol, they're going to be a genealogy. So, for example, here, Elpael and Abitub are siblings, and Eber, Misham, Shamed, Beriah are also siblings, but children of Elpael. So we're going to jump down here and do this next section separately. So First Chronicles chapter 8, starting in verse 14 through verse 16. And if you jump down to verse 16, you'll see that at the end of this list, these are the sons of Bariah. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a note. These are the sons of Bariah. Verse 14. Ahio, Sheshach, Jeremoth, Zebediah, Arad, Ader, Michael, finally a somewhat normal name, at least for our standards, Ispa, and Joha, the sons of Bariah. So for some reason, when you first read it, it looks like these are all continuing from verse 14 with the sons of Elpael, but they're not. It ends with the sons of Bariah. So going backwards, backwards engineering it, Bariah also drove out the inhabitants of Gath, and then the sons of Bariah are verse 14 through 16. So it continues this pattern, Jumping down to verse 17, for some reason we go back to the sons of Elpael. Starting in verse 17, we're going to go back up here at the top. Hopefully this doesn't confuse you too much. And continue listing sons of Elpael, who were denoted previously by a dollar sign. Verse 17, Zebediah. Meshalom, and Hezekiah, and Heber, Ishmarai also, and Jezliah, and another Jobab, the sons of Elpael. So from here, you have the dollar signs denoting sons of Elpael. Jumping down to verse 14, you have the sons of Bariah, and then it goes back to, in verse 17, listing the sons of Elpaia. So first read of that was really confusing. Second, third, whatever number of read I'm on, got a little bit clearer because it ends with the sons of Bariah. It ends with the sons of Elpaia. So it's surmisable that the previous list are the sons. Hopefully that makes sense to you. It's going to keep doing that. So we're just going to continue with First Chronicles 8, verse 19 through 21. And in verse 21, these are the sons of Shemhai. Now, I don't know how Shemhai fits into the rest of the genealogy. So for the life of me, I'm just going to list it as a separate genealogical line. And I still know it falls under the sons of Benjamin because this entire chapter falls under the sons of Benjamin. So starting with verse 19, Shimhai had Jacob, Zikri, Zabdi, Elienai, Zilphi, Eliel, Verse 21, Adiah, Bariah, and Shimra, the sons of Shimei. Again, verse 22, I am not sure how this genealogy falls into line, so we're just going to make a note of it. These are, per verse 25, the sons of Shashak. 
As usual, I'm running out of symbols. So just to try to keep it simple, we are going to use that symbol. I don't know what the name of that symbol is. So if you know, let me know. I think it's like a carrot, maybe. Verse 22, Ishpan. Heber, another Heber. Elial, another Elial. I think we had, yeah, we had an Elial in the last list. Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Antithysia, Ifadia, Penuel, the sons of Shashak. And one more genealogical line that I'm not entirely sure how it fits, but again, a tribe of Benjamin is verse 26 and 27. Jumping down to verse 27 at the very end, the sons of Jerohim, denoted with those parentheses. Verse 26 and Sham Shariah. Jehariah, Athaliah, Jerusiah, Eliah, and Zikri, the sons of Jerohan. Verse 28, these were heads of the fathers by their generations, chief men. These dwelt in Jerusalem. Verse 29. And at Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Maica. We've heard Maica before. Yet again, must have been a pretty popular female name at that time. Verse 29 requires just a smidge of research to figure out who exactly is the father of Gibeon. Well, according to the Bible... In the very next chapter, I told you there was a lot of scripture involved. I'm pretty excited to cover this much scripture in one video and to kind of tie it together because this gets really exciting when you see how these two line up and the places that they don't seem to. Just for future reference, as I go through these two chapters at the same time, I'm going to note any discrepancies in green so that you can tell the difference between chapter 8 and chapter 9. There aren't that many. But it is worth noting where some people are moved and some changes are made. So just note anything in green is the differences between chapter 8 and chapter 9. So starting in 1 Chronicles chapter 9, it answers the question from 1 Chronicles chapter 8. And in Gibeon, well, the father of Gibeon, Jehiel, whose wife's name was Maica. Makes sense from the last chapter. She is purple because she is female. When you see a symbol in front of a name, it means they're siblings. And in this chapter, we're going to get genealogical lines. So I'm just going to go name after name after name until they start listing siblings. Then you can kind of see the difference. So for verse 36, his firstborn son, Abdon, then Zer, and Kish, and Baal, and Ner. Ner is in green because there's a discrepancy. I'll talk about that in just a second. And Nadab. Verse 37, Gidor and Ahio. And Zechariah and Mikloth. And Jehiel, forgot to mention, in the notes is the father of Gibeon. Jumping to verse 38 again. And Mikloth begot Shimeon. And they also dwelt with their brethren at Jerusalem over against their brethren. And they also dwelt with their brethren at Jerusalem and against their Brethren. Sorry, just a weird spacing issue. 
verse 39, and Ner begat Kish, and Kish begat somebody you should be familiar with, Saul. And Saul begat Jonathan, someone you should also be familiar with. And we're going to use the asterisk again here because Saul has a bunch of children. Jonathan, Malchai Shua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Verse 40, and the sons of Jonathan, I'm going to do an arrow so that you know we're going this way, Meribael, and Meribael begat Micah, the sons of Micah, Python, Melek, Arya, and Ahaz. Jumping back to the carrot symbol, because again, running out of symbols, verse 42, Ahaz begat Jera, and Jera, continuing the line, begat Alameth, and as Maveth and Zimri. And Zimri begat Moza. And Moza begat Beniah. And Beniah begat Raphiah, his son, which is a confusing way of wording it, but just know that Beniah, Raphiah, his son, Eliasa, his son. Azel, his son, and this person, verse 44, had six sons whose names Azraikam, Bukaru, Ishmael, Shiriah, Obadiah, And Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. We're going to jump back to chapter 8 and finish out the chapter. Should be the case that we can finish out this chapter with minimal work here because we've already done most of the work from chapter 9, but let's jump back and see if we can notice any differences, any changes, and kind of see what we got going on here. So jumping back to 1 Chronicles 8, verse 29. And at Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Maacah. Got that. We got his name from chapter 9, Jehiel. Verse 30. And his firstborn son, and Abdon, and Zer, Kish, and Baal, and Nadab, so Ner is not mentioned in chapter 8. That's worth noting. So we'll continue. Nadab, Hedor, Ahio, Zaker. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Zaker in parentheses because I feel pretty confident that that is the same person. And Mikloth. And Mikloth begat Shemaiah. We're going to put that in parentheses just because it's spelled different. I'm not putting that in green because I don't really consider that a discrepancy, if you will. I think it's just a different spelling. And these also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem over against them. Same note from chapter 9. Verse 33. Ner, who is Again, ironically, not mentioned in this chapter. So it's kind of weird that you would be like, and Ner, who we didn't talk about earlier. It's like half of the information is missing because you don't even know who the father of Gideon is until you read the next chapter. And you really don't know who Ner is until you read the next chapter. But it makes sense put together. I don't know why it's like that, but there you go. It's just more scripture for us to cover. Verse 33, Ner begat Kish. And Kish begat Saul, same Saul that you're thinking of. 
Saul begat Jonathan and Melchishua and Abinadab and Eshbaal, tracking so far, and the sons of Jonathan, Meribaal, and Meribaal begat Micah, and the sons of Micah were Python, Melech, still tracking, and Teria, spelled different, we'll make a note of that. And Ahaz, continuing, verse 36. And Ahaz begat Jehoiada. And Jehoiada begat Almeth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri begat Moza, and Moza begat Bainia, Rapheth his son, Rapha his son. Eliasa his son, Azel his son. Azel had six sons whose names Azraikam, Bokaru, Ishmael, and Shishariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel. One more genealogy just to round the entire story out. And the sons of Eshek, his brother. Now, verse 39 was mildly confusing. But I am going to say that Eshek is the brother of Azel. But because I'm not 100% positive, I'm going to put him off to the side. And if you look him up otherwise, you'll see the Eshek is only mentioned one time. His brother Eshek's sons. So for the sake of this passage, going back to verse 8, I'm just going to put Eshek off to the side. And I'm going to put him just kind of around this area. I'm not sure if he's Azel's brother, but we're going to put him there just for the sake of the video. So Eshek, verse 39, his brother. Ulam. His firstborn, Jehush the second, and Eliphalet the third. And the sons of Ulam, and the sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons, and sons, sons. 150. And all these are the sons of Benjamin. And by all of these, it basically means all of these. Everybody here is from the tribe of Benjamin. All the way starting at the beginning, even more. The tribe of Benjamin. It went from the beginning of the video in Genesis 46, saying there were 14 souls, all the way down to thousands and thousands and thousands of Benjamites. The two most famous ones, spoiler alert, are Saul. And I'll leave you to figure out the second one. If you know the answer, leave it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like a copy of the Excel sheet to do it however you would like, Please email me, joyofgenealogy at yahoo.com. I'd be happy to give you a copy. You can change the font. You can change the symbols. You can do whatever you need to do to make this as user-friendly for you as possible. Appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next video.